everyone. I'm Becky. And I'm Sarah. And we're doing Big Green Book Reviews. Today we are talking about When Elephants Fly by Nancy Richardson Fisher, I'm going to say. Um, I'm really bad with last names. And so I got this book, first I got this book at Book Expo of America because we got into a line. We didn't know what the line was for. And this was the book. One of the books. There's two books. The other book is actually a sequel. And I was like, what is this? But then we got this one and we were like, oh. okay, okay, this was worth the line. It was. Um... <laughs> But I also got it off of NetGalley because I'm auto-approved by Harlequin Teen. Yeah, I did too because I was having trouble getting, having trouble finding time to read it. Not right. that I didn't enjoy it. I was just having trouble finding time to read it. So the description. T. Lily Decker lives in a constant fear of developing schizophrenia, the same disease that caused her mother to try to kill Lily over a decade ago. Lily lives by a set of self-imposed rules that she thinks will help prevent the onset of the disorder. However, when Lily witnesses an elephant try to kill her newborn calf, Lily knows she will do whatever it takes to save the young elephant. Which is very, very vague. So, okay, wait. Full disclosure, I didn't finish this book. But I'm going to. Because I like it. I just didn't have time to do it. I went to the meal fair, got a little sun, you know. Um, I really, like, I loved this book. Like, I was I totally shocked. It played on, um, anybody who knows me knows I have a very large family history of Alzheimer's. And, like, I have lived a constant fear that I'm going to get it. Like, if I forget a phone number, I'm panicked. And I thought that the way she played with, um, Lily trying to deal with schizophrenia felt so very real. And it's not something that you see. Like, I've read books about people getting, potentially getting, like, genetic diseases like Huntington's disease, but I've never seen it so clearly done with kind of a mental illness like schizophrenia. Well, and the way, because you see flashbacks, you see her mother Violet, you see how she, like, unrolled, like, unfurled, basically, and how the disease kind of took over, and, like, how it affected her father, and how it affected Lily. And I thought that was, like, very beautifully done, too. And then to kind of pepper in kind of how to um, determine if you have, vaguely determine if you have the disease, but then also kind of the statistics associated with it. Right. Like, how you could have, like, a schizophrenic, one schizophrenic episode during this kind of period of time and not go any further, or, like, she's got this whole span of time where she could develop the disease. That's true. And everything, I, as a psych major, I can tell you, I think everything in it is very accurate. I also thought the stuff with the, anybody also who knows me knows I'm a little bit of an animal rights freak. <laughs> Sarah witnessed me, has witnessed me. Oh God, the turtle. <laughs> the turtle. The turtle. <laughs> there was a person on the side of the road who had a turtle, and he was holding the turtle up by its one little foot. <laughs> and the poor turtle was trying to get down, and I was in a car full of my friends, and I kind of U-turned, and I literally had to be physically stopped from going back. And now every time we drive past that part in the road, she talks about the turtle. <laughs> <laughs> because you are here... You're, <laughs> Go ahead. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so the point of the story is, so the big part of the story is about the Swifty the elephant. And it was adorable! You know, I love elephants. I love elephants, too. There were parts of this book in between the schizophrenia, and so Swifty was born in a zoo, and his, her mother rejects her. I'm going to cry. And so um, she has to she has to go back to the circus for her, yes, the elephant who, like, her daddy. Well, the dad her, elephant lives. Her daddy elephant lives. I was trying to think of the proper word, but I couldn't think of the proper word. Um, sire. Sire. That's the word I can think of. I'll get there eventually. Um, lived. But he wasn't there. They didn't go into that, but I, couldn't, I had a problem with that. Um, and so it talks about the, is it is it okay for this animal to be in the zoo? What is its life in the circus? What happens? And it also talks about, and I had seen a documentary about elephants, but she did such a wonderful job with this, about the fact that elephants actually do mourn, and they cry, and they can die of loneliness. And there's even, like, a little bit of, like, how the baby elephant wants to bond, wants to have that bond. There's a part where she's interacting with the male elephants, and she won't let go of his tail. I know, like, I Stop learned... bringing this up I'm going to cry myself. I kept having to put the book down and walk away. And that's... I think that shows, like, how well written it is. Because I was, like, so sucked in. I was, like, sobbing. And, like, I, like, literally, like, put my Kindle down. And I'm, like, I, I went to talk to my parents. And my, my mom's, like, maybe you should stop reading it. I'm, like, I can't. Well, and it was so well done because I think that it... It kind of points to these different kind of ways for elephants to live. And it doesn't say that one is better than another, there are better ways to go about doing things, but also kind of talking about the fact that with these Asian elephants, um, 
they're losing their habitat, so we're losing elephants in the wild. And then you've also got these poachers and things like that. So, like, zoos are a place where we can make sure that they still survive, but it's not it's not their life. And so it's, is it really kind of not worth it, but is it really kind of the better alternative? And it, it's just a very realistic look at everything. And I don't think it, I don't think it pushes for one versus another because they all have their own issues. That is true. And there are better, like there are better ways in these problematic environments to make it better, but it will never be perfect. I'm not going to comment because I have very strong feelings about this. <laughs> and then it'll turn into like this whole other video. And people but I think know it's me very know real. That. It's, yes. it's very real, I think, is what it kind of comes down to. And it's very real and it allows the reader to kind of make their own opinions and to stand by their own thoughts, values, and possibly even research further on their own. That's true. And I usually give away my arcs. And this arc I have signed and I think I'm going to keep it. Um, do we have anything else to say or should we rate it? No, I just, I do kind of want to talk about the fact that the the kind of romance kind of comes up out of nowhere. It was like really weird. Like it, I, I feel like it kind of, der and I haven't finished it yet, but as of right now it is derailing the plot. So Because you could go without it. But it is through Harlequin Tween and you expect... It is through Harlequin But I also felt like the romance... Again, through Harley Quinn, so it does. It's a little bit more graphic than you might find in another YA book. But I also feel like, I mean, she was supposed to have been living this, like, sheltered life, this self-imposed, she wouldn't live anything, and then she meets someone who is supporting her and who agrees with her. And so it just was, she even says at one point, she's like, I'm going to live. I'm going to give up all of these rules. Well, and I expect that it would progress there, but I think it just, it felt like it turned on a dime. Like, it was like... They're fighting, and now they're not. See, like, that didn't just, bother I, me. I don't know. It didn't bother me. Um, we should just the, the other. Sorry. The one other thing I want to say is this is very similar to Ann Na's recent, um, I think it's called The Place Between Us. And it's unfortunate because I think this book is better, but I don't think it's going to make the kind of lists that the Ann Na book is going to. I don't I don't think Harley Quinn Teen has the clout. Which is unfortunate. Because it is, this one they've, is better done. They've also released some really wonderful books. Yeah. Um, so we should just rate it. Okay. So our rating system starts at the top with five unicorns. We go down to two unicorns. If we don't like it, it's a horse. I'll allow you to rate it now. Um, I'm going to give it four unicorns because it's adorable and one baby elephant because I like baby elephants. It's true. I'm at, like, <laughs> I'm like at a four, four and a half. I really enjoyed this and I, I highly see. recommend it. Yeah, I can't really give it like... <laughs> Okay, it's a tentative four because I have to finish it. That's true. <laughs> so that's where we are on When Elephants Fly. All right, so see you around. Bye.